Hello everyone, this is Miss Jen over at the Taylor Library. Welcome to our fall craft series. So today I'm gonna do a quick overview of how the fall is going to go and then give you some instructions on how to complete our very first craft. So today, um, if you take out your packet that you got with signing up, it should look a little like this. This is for the all ages group. And in this bag, are a ton of awesome crafts that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. And this should take us all the way through until December. So there's something every week, uh, just about, that will occupy some time. Um, and most of these crafts can be completed whenever you have the time to. Um, our Friday uh, story hour will be posted at 10 a.m., but it will be available for a couple of hours at the very least so that you can come and view it um, and then complete the corresponding craft. So today was our first story hour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't had a chance to see that yet, go to our Facebook page. Um, that's uh, Taylor Library Dairy is the tag for our Facebook page and you should be able to find our story for today in the videos section. So to start, we are going to be using this paint tray, oh, that's upside down, with our paintbrush and this nice heavy rock. So this will make your bag a whole lot lighter for next time. But these are what we need to start. Everything else can go away. For the most part, you'll have everything that you need in these kits. There are only a couple of things just to protect your tables um, and maybe wipe things down afterwards um, or during that you wanna have handy. So today, um, this is our messiest craft. So I have this bag right here that I'm gonna use to protect my table. Um, take this one outside if it's a nice day for you um, because this one is a little bit uh, messy as you can see with the paints, but as long as you have something covering your table, you should be okay. The next thing you're going to want is a little cup of water. I have this paper cup. You can use a real one. Just make sure you wash it pretty good. These are acrylic paints, so they're not going to hurt you, um, but we still don't want to be eating that. Uh, you'll need a pencil, just a simple pencil, and it will do. A lightly damp paper towel or cloth, and then a dry paper towel or cloth that you don't really care about. All right, so to start, we're gonna wipe down our rocks just to get any dirt that might be hiding on it. Make sure we have a nice, clean canvas ready for us. We are going to be painting um, these rocks to resemble flowers, so um, as the weather starts to change, we're going to see uh, that the flowers are going to start to wilt. And I wanted to make sure that we had something really pretty to stare at all year long. So um, one idea that I have, and I completely understand if you don't want to do this, but if you would like to participate when you're com uh, you've completed painting your rock, bring it to the Taylor Library. I'll seal it so that um, the weather won't affect the rock and we can create a whole garden of your beautiful creations together or feel free to keep it at home as just a reminder that beautiful things can be around even in the dead of winter all right so to start now this is dry for the most part um, I'm gonna pick the side that I want to paint on I like this one best and I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna do a light sketch of what I want. You probably won't see what I'm doing, but you'll be able to see it on your own. Uh, and this will give you an idea of where you want your flower to start, where the center is gonna be, and how big you want the petals. So I'm going to start right here. And then I'm gonna do U-shaped petals all the way around. And this doesn't have to be perfect. If you don't like what you're seeing as you're drawing it, feel free to um, erase it or move it. Do whatever you need to do to make this the beautiful creation that you want it to be. 
sometimes it's hard to see. So moving it into a better light will show you, you know, what you've created so far. And then, perfect, just like that. So I like that design, uh, and that's going to be the start of my flower. So next I'm going to take out my paints and my paintbrush. Whenever your paintbrush isn't actively painting, make sure you put it in the water, because otherwise it'll dry out your brush and ruin it, and we don't want that. So. I got my paintbrush just a little wet to start. I'm gonna dry off so it's not dripping. And then I'm gonna open up these paints just like that. Now, um, you can always take a paper plate and mix these colors. These are our primary colors. So if we mix them together, they're gonna to create different colors. If you mix yellow and blue together, you're going to get green. If you mix red and blue together, you'll get purple. If you mix red and yellow together, you'll get orange. Well, that's a little bit of color theory for you guys. If you take a little plate and scoop it and then mix them together, you'll get other colors. Um, I'm okay with just using these primary colors on mine, um, but do what makes the most sense for you and create something that really is imaginative and that you'll be proud of. So to start, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow and I'm going to make the center of my flower. You might want to do a couple of um, coats on this because as you go, if you don't do a lot of paint on it, it might get a little streaky. I like that, just like that. Um, if I'm gonna switch colors, just like that, wipe it off, dunk it and wipe it off so that I have a nice clean brush before I dip it in another paint color. But if you decide that you don't wanna have red at all and you wanna mix these two together to get the perfect purple, feel free. This is all your craft. Okay, so I'm gonna do some red and I'm gonna do some sweeping flowers just like this. This is just how I'm doing it, so feel free to do whatever you like. And if you don't wanna make a flower and you wanna make a robot or um, a flying monster or whatever, go to town and have fun. This is going to be your project and everything you make will be beautiful. Now looking at that, I really like that design and I'm thinking that I kind of want to actually have a couple of little flowers around it. So um, I'm going to ignore my uh, pencil sketch and just do something different now that I see it sketched out. Sometimes when you're doing art, you want to switch it up a little bit and that's okay. So this isn't perfectly clean, but I know it's not going to bleed too much into it. So I'm going to do another little yellow circle over here, and one right here. And then I think a fourth one right here. But perfect. Sometimes you might need to wet it a couple of times and then blot it off so that it's fairly clean. But that's why we have this um, paper towel just to help protect our surfaces. All right, so now I kind of really like the design of that, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now to make this petal shape, what I'm kind of doing is pressing down and flicking outward. Um, and that seems to be doing really well for me, but if anyone else has other techniques, feel free. So pressing down and flipping out, and this creates a little bit of a fan work. I wanna make this a nice big thick one. So I'm gonna go in between each of them and add another. Just like that. And that's starting to look really pretty. You 
sometimes you want to put a fair amount on your paintbrush. Don't be too stingy because otherwise it won't show up. Just like that. I think this one needs to be thicker. So I'm going to go back over, add another row. And I'm just going to keep painting until I have the design that I like best. just kind of overlapping and adding additional flowers in. Like they're peeking out from underneath. It's so full. And if you decide to add a flower and want to add something in the middle, again, to kind of give it a little definition, just make sure that your brush is mostly clean. And then add a good size dollop right to the center, just like that. And I think this one wants one too. And then right there. And that's it. So I really like this design. I think it's simple and pretty. And I hope that you do too. Well, I'm going to leave this to dry. And then once it's dry, I will have my own little garden. So as I said, if you um, decide that you want to put this outside or if you want to um, display it at the library, uh, drop it off to us and I will put a cover over it, basically uh, just a clear coat on top of it and that will protect it from the elements and we can make a beautiful garden together. So this will take about two hours to dry um, and then you can admire your beautiful work. And that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this craft and make sure that you tune in next week for the next one. Have a great night.